Rolling St Thunder, the ultra challenging 1986 arcade game from Namco and Atari. Insert quarter output fun. If getting your ass kicked is your idea of fun, which it is because this game is fun, but it will also kick your ass and take your money. Rolling Thunder hails from that time when arcade games were making the shift from classics like Space Invaders and Pac-Man to adventure games, more commonly associated with consoles. It's the kind of game that you need to memorize in order to defeat. Which of course requires a lot of quarters. In fact, you can continue and it even saves your score going forward. But the thing is, Rolling Thunder is super cool and the colorful hooded bad guys cool music and clever level design made it worthy to spend your week's allowance on. That and you're saving a beautiful damsel in distress. You and your brown slacks can't let her down. When I was a kid I used to play Rolling Thunder at a local department store called Hills. Anyone remember Hills? It's now a Walmart. And before that it was an Ames, but back in the day it was a Hills. And since I've always been a huge James Bond fan, I was immediately drawn to Rolling Thunder. Which also has a super cool name. I liked this game so much that in grade school I would draw the little hooded guys in my notebooks and make them all different colors and stuff. I think I told that story in the Rolling Thunder review for the NES. Anyway, when I was picking up some arcade games for the classic game room Intergalactic Space Arcade, I had the option to pick up a Rolling Thunder at a really good price. So I did. I feel like Rolling Thunder is part of me becoming who I am. Because I spent a lot of quarters on this game back in the day. Maybe the same one, but probably not. The objective in Rolling Thunder is simple. To get through the levels as quickly as possible without dying. That sounds a lot easier than it actually is though. Primarily, because even though your guy is a super spy, he's had a horrible shoulder injury and can't shoot up. Or jump and fire at the same time. Which makes eliminating the wealth of bad guys who will swarm you in this game quite challenging. Fortunately, he can jump, the enemies are idiots, and he looks great in brown slacks and red shoes. This game hates me. The key to winning Rolling Thunder is memorizing Rolling Thunder. Bring it, cat. While the enemies don't do the exact same things every single time you play the game, they're in more or less the same positions all the time. Oh great, now there's lava. There has to be lava. And it's kind of essential to fire ahead knowing that bad guys will be there in order to speed your progress through the level. Rolling Thunder leaves no margin for error. You need to memorize and play the levels quickly. We've got cats, we've got gnomes, we have lava monsters, and bat people. All of whom want to destroy you and your brown slacks from hills, which is where I assume he got them. The Rolling Thunder arcade machine itself is a fairly average looking game. It doesn't light up or anything and the screen position is kind of awkward because of the grill and speaker placement below it. But it does offer a nice place to put your quarters. As you can see, I did not have this machine converted to free play. So I continue to spend my quarters on it. Except this time I have the key to open it and get them back. During gameplay you may notice that occasionally I'll run out of bullets which is a no-no in this game, by the way, at which point it turns your last bullet into a slow bullet. It's just merciless. Let's take a look at the arcade cabinet, which would have been published by Atari back in the day. That has some cool artwork on the control panel. There's only two buttons, actually four, because Rolling Thunder has jump and shoot buttons on both sides of the joystick. And while it's kind of hard to make out, the joystick actually says Atari and has the logo. I rather enjoy the side art on Rolling Thunder, which has that mid-80s anime style scene in old school series like Golgo 13 and Robotech. But most importantly, as you can see, Rolling Thunder has some good company here in the intergalactic space arcade. 
I think that Rolling Thunder is best enjoyed on the arcade machine with the joystick and buttons, but the fact is it's also great on the Nintendo. These side-scrolling adventure games made the transition to 8-bit and 16-bit consoles better than most of the early 80s arcade games like Centipede or Robotron. As you can see, I haven't made any modifications to this game. It's still got the original screen and controls and plays well. It's Rolling Thunder which could have easily been called that guy with brown slacks and a red turtleneck who can't fire up.